Welcome to the Answers Yes podcast, where we interview some of the most interesting people that have said yes to opportunities in their life. We hope that through these stories, you can learn to create your own destiny by saying yes along the way. Join us as we explore the new series covering topics such as passion, integrity, and hard work. I'm your host, Jim Riley, and I hope you enjoy these interviews as much as I do. I believe that everyone has an important message worth hearing. This week, we take the gloves off with Dan Dreyer, the CEO of Dixon Flannels. He talks about how he started a $20 million a year business out of the back of his Scion in the parking lot of his regular day job working as a re- motorcycle repairman. Have some fun with this. We're heading into the holiday season. If you're looking for some great gift ideas, this is your guy because by the time you're done listening to this show, you are going to want to support him, his family, and his journey into creating the best flannels in the marketplace. Hello and welcome to the Answers Yes podcast. I'm thrilled to be on the air today with my guest that's on the other line, and that's Danny Dixon. How are you today, Danny? Oh, man. Like I told you earlier, you know, it's just another day trying to make it happen. Thank you so much for having me, man. I'm super excited to be here. Dude, what I'm absolutely blown away by, I follow your social media channel. I love your product, but you guys just posted you were moving into this warehouse, a big warehouse. You can tell us how many square feet in a second, but it was like overnight you moved in, you had the place painted and the offices set up and all kinds of shit going on over there. Like, wow, these guys are fast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's, there's one thing about me that just seems like I'm never without a project. You know, and I cannot sleep until it's done, man. So, like, I'm, I'm like, I, I like having a million things going all at once. You know, kind of, it's, it's like that insanity is my sanity kind of place. You know, it's like that organized chaos kind of spot that, that you kind of tend to become to love, like as an entrepreneur. You know, yeah. And we were, you know, we were completely shipping out of our old warehouse, like last, not, not this last Friday, but the Friday before that, and shipped out a couple thousand packages out of there, cut it off move the entire weekend, you know, continue shipping out of the new warehouse by Monday, you know, with a couple of thousand packages going out. And it's, you know, it's absolute insanity, but, you know, it's, it's holiday season and it seems like it's, it's the only time we end up making those big moves that make zero sense, you know? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of the way it goes. <laughs> you're making the rest of us look like slackers because the, the pace that you guys moved. I mean, and I'm not, and, and look, you weren't just hanging pictures on the wall. You guys were painting murals and stuff. Like you had some big projects going on in that move. Oh yeah, man. This, I mean, see, there's one thing it's like, and what I really try to go for in our, in our working places is to keep everyone inspired. You know, and a lot of what we do is creative, but then also, you know, for a warehouse staff and everything, when they feel like it's such a, you know, a super rad place to work at, like it, they don't mind being there for so many hours. They don't mind, you know, really getting, you know, getting everything done and they feel like they're a part of it and everything. And it's really cool to include them in that. So when we moved into the new place, it was like, I had to have like my graffiti guys come in and make it feel like home, you know, and get all the m- murals up there and really, you know, make it a personal space already. So we weren't just shipping out of four blank walls, you know, and, uh, and that just, that just feeds it, you know? So, um, and then of course, while we're doing it, we also, you know, furnished the place and got crazy with the flooring and everything else. So that we, and that's all, to be honest with you, is just a temporary spot while all the rest gets built out. Yeah. So it's, uh, we're, we're pretty much living in a, in a open construction zone right now, <laughs> but the warehouse is completely, you know, moving. So it's good. Well, if, uh, if you're listening to the show and you're like me, you need some kind of visual to, to look at while we're talking, you can go to Dixon underscore flannel underscore CO for the Instagram page. You can see some of this stuff that we're talking about. And Danny's got his own page, but Danny, I love your product, dude. Um, I've been in Dixon flannels for about a year. My wife bought me my first one last year for Christmas. Um, didn't know much about the brand until she got it for me. And I just fell in love with it. And since I've, I've been a good customer, um, I just, I would love to hear your story, uh, you know, maybe where you grew up at and, you know, maybe some of your first jobs and how you ultimately landed on your own business and got that whole thing started. Oh yeah, absolutely, man. You know, um, it, it's funny because the, the best part about entrepreneurism and, and I love meeting other entrepreneurs and stuff because hearing those stories, you know, and it's, they're always so different. And, and so it's like, it, it's inspiring because, when you have a podcast with like someone like yourself, you're putting this thing out and with all these stories that people get to be like, Hey, you know, and I was from that same place, or I was like, like that in a different way. And I, I remember as I was 
looking for something I was supposed to be doing, you know, or I felt like I was supposed to be doing 10, 15 years ago, I couldn't find those resources. And it's so awesome that people were out there making that happen, you know, like you today. Yeah. So I, I love to share the story, you know, so, um, I'm, I'm from Orange County, California. So, um, currently all of our operations, um, in uh, Fort Dixon, we're all based now out of Arizona. So we're in Tempe, Arizona. Uh, but um, I am from Orange County, uh, grew, born and raised in, in Anaheim, California, um, grew up with, you know, just a very, very normal, I would say, you know, like a kind of blue collar family. And um, my parents were really young when they had me, they're 20, 21. Um, so I grew up in a, you know, pretty normal house. There was, you know, it, it's not like there was a rough upbringing or anything, but they were very young. So mm-hmm. we didn't come from a lot. Mm-hmm. Um so went went to school there for the most part, moved to South Orange County by the time I was in um by the time I was in high school. So I went to high school in, in uh Point Luisa Viejo. And um, you know, it just I got I, I'm not gonna lie, you know, I, I got in a lot of trouble in school. Um <laughs> I was school was <laughs> school was very easy for me. I, I always did really well. I had most of the um most of the top classes done by the time I was in ninth, 10th grade, but I didn't want to be in AP classes. I didn't want to do any of that stuff. I, w- I wasn't even really looking like college wasn't my thing. You know, I was, um, sports were never really my thing except for hockey. I grew up playing ice hockey. So I was never really attached to school in a sports manner either. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it was one of those things where like, it just I never really was engaged there. I, I didn't, I didn't really understand why I was there. I didn't want to be there. The day I was 18, I walked into the office and I found myself out of school. Wow. I just dropped out of high school. So I dropped out. Um, I went, but then my mom was basically like, yo, you keep, like you're, you're an idiot for one, but for two, um, you can't do anything without a diploma. So I went back, you know, finished up some credits real quick at a continuation school and, you know, got my diploma. And, um, and that was in my senior year. But, uh, you know, I never looked back. I didn't, I had zero reason to go to school i didn't want to go to school i just wanted to go into mortgage because it was all i knew really that i saw a lot of money happening at the time so to put it in a time perspective i I graduated in 2003 so i'm watching my mom her life is changing and she's in she's in um selling title insurance and and so i'm watching these mortgage guys that are young and they're making a ton of money you know things are on the rise my sister's having a very different upbringing than i did because i'm watching my family dynamic change as far as, um, as far as, you know, um, income goes mm-hmm. and, you know, my mom's killing it and I'm watching all this. So I got into, um, I got into mortgage, didn't really find my spot, you know, right away. Um, I was working for a title insurance company, went through escrow, did all that kind of stuff. And I think that that was the first time where I really got a taste of like the, the fact that I like sales mm-hmm. and, and I like to see how, you know, what made people tick, I like to see, I like the marketing aspects. I really dug that. Um, however, um, you know, same kind of reasons that I didn't like high school. I didn't want to wear a tie and I, and I hated having rules. And it was like, and, and I got to tell you, you know, like early into my twenties, I was, I was making a lot of money and that was great. And that was there, but like, you know, I was losing my hair fast coming out in like clumps in the shower, super stressed, had too much money for, for somebody who was that young, wasted everything. You know, and then went through the financial crisis and kind of saw everybody lose everything that they had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was young. I was young enough so that I, you know I didn't really go through that aspect of it, but I watched it, and it really woke me up. And I, um, since I had never had that college experience of like I think like really getting away, I um, I decided that I wanted to go to Chicago. I was like I was watching it. And I was like, you know, what? I'm gonna lose my job any day. You know, I was like, I'm I'm watching on the news like. <laughs> you know, banks closing and everything <laughs> happening all at once. And yeah. and I was like, you know, what? I sold my car, sold everything I had and I moved to Chicago. And, um, and I just took off there because at the time I convinced myself that, you know, I could go to a trade school and I was going to be a chef. So I went to, went to corner art school, found out a couple months in, wasn't really liking it, but I, I went from, I was, you know, making a pretty good living for in my young twenties to washing dishes at a vegetarian cafe and loving it because I was just riding my bicycle around and living in the big city, you know, and it was like the simplicity in life. Uh, it just changed everything for me. Mm-hmm. And, um, 
and I, I talk about this one night uh, on one of the episodes of my podcast. Um, but there's this one night and I was getting out of school. I took night classes there and I, and the school is like right next to Cabrini green, which is now not there anymore. It's since gotten torn, torn down, but it's a, um, an infamous, um, projects that are in Chicago. Mm-hmm. Not, not really the best place for like a, <laughs> a guy from Orange County, like coming out at midnight, you know, <laughs> out of school every night. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, uh, and it was like, I was on the L taking a ride home and I was listening to this Wu-Tang song and it's called, it's yours. And, and it says in the lyrics, like you got the, you got the world in the palm of your hand, it's yours. And it was just as like, it's hard to explain because of this weird defining moment that I was like, I'm like, all right, I found myself, I found a piece of myself. Like I pushed myself here, you know, like, and, and I made it happen. I, I haven't found out exactly what I'm supposed to do, but I don't think I ever want to play by the same rules ever again. You know, I was like, this isn't a place for me, but if I just, you know, basically at this point, believe in myself, I, I, like I could do anything really, you know? And so I, um, I was with a girl at the time moved in with that I was, that I lived with and I was with her for like four years and I'm like, wasn't really going anywhere. And, you know, obviously my dishwashing career <laughs> wasn't going anywhere <laughs> either. <laughs> I've seen everything I could see in Chicago and, you know, I'm like just riding bicycles, having a great time. And, uh, I was like, you know what? I, I want to go home. I heard that there's this motorcycle shop for shop for, sa- for sale for sale. I hit up my pops and it was like, and, and we grew up on motorcycles and stuff. So I was like, Hey, um, you know, is this something you would want to do? And, and he had been looking to get a change of pace. And so I, I basically, I bought a one-way ticket and like told my girlfriend at the time, I was like, sorry, I'm going back to California. I, I got to go back and, and make this happen, you know? Mm-hmm. So, um, we, I go back to California um, I'm in business with my pops for like seven years. Um, and as I was there, I realized that I just, you know, I really didn't want to be tied to retail. That's, that's what I found out after all that. I mean, that that's, but that's the basis of where I was in the motorcycle industry. You'll see from Dixon's in like culture that's in it. And a lot of it's based in the motorcycle industry. So I'm mostly as an adult, that's almost all I'd done as an adult, you know, was, was be, you know, having a motorcycle shop, being into Harleys and dirt bikes and all kinds of stuff like that. And as, as luck may have it, um, we were looking for flannels and I, w- I was like, you know what, it would be really cool if we carried flannels here, but I can't find any good ones. These things wash up like super crappy. They, they shrink really bad. They wrinkle really bad. They're only good the first time you wear them really until you have to wash them. And then the collars are all messed up. I hate it. You know, I was like, I never even keep any of them, you know, and they go for in skate shops for 80 bucks, 70 bucks. Yeah. And yet there's nothing good or you can get everything at Walmart and and it's way cheaper, but it's never going to look good. And I was having a hard time finding a product to put on the shelf. And then it put me on this endless search of figuring out how could I be a brand? How could I become that? What, you know, what could I do? And then that's when that all kind of started and uh and at the time i uh i got rid of my truck so that i could so that i could buy a scion so that i could put my inventory in the back since i couldn't put it in the back of a truck to get stolen uh-huh. and my whole company started selling them like i i i wanted to keep it separate from the shop so i'd sell them out of the back of my car <laughs> and like and, and that's that's where i started and that shop was in irvine california selling so, um, uh flannels selling. out of the back of your scion Har- Har- Harley biker style flannels in Irvine, California. Least yeah. least likely city to be selling Harley flannels, by the way. Yeah, <laughs> and so it's uh, it, it, it's funny when I think back to that time in my life because I was very much so. Um, it, you know, it wasn't that long ago. That was 2013. You know, it's we're going on seven years and my life has changed so tremendously just in, just in personal aspects of, of who I am now compared to them or compared to then, you know, and when that started, my whole focus for it was to, my goal was to make three or $400 more a month because, you know, here I am, I'm now, you know, I'm now married, just had our first kid and we live in Huntington beach, California, renting a house cause can't afford to buy one, you know? And, um, and I'm wondering, like, how am I? How do I get from this spot of being a young Huntington Beach guy, like partying all the time, to like young dad guy, still wanting to live in the same community so that I can have my kids grow up somewhere awesome? Mm-hmm. 